Hey, what's going on guys? It's Brian here, Brian's Law Maintenance. Hope you guys are doing well. Hey, today we're gonna to be talking about the 2017 F-250 and about 25 to 30 more questions or topics that you probably didn't even know you have. Long story short, about two weeks ago, we did a three-year review on the 2017 Ford F-250 truck that we have for our lawn and landscape business. And you know what? That video got about 90,000 views in two weeks, which is pretty insane if you think about it. So out of that video came hundreds and hundreds of comments and questions. And what I did is I compiled them all here into a list for you guys and I want to go through those right here right now now if you missed that first video we'll make sure to leave a little card up here in the corner or wherever it is and you can check that out after this video it was really insightful and the idea was to make a video to help you guys with purchasing your next work truck or you know family vehicle to help you guys out with going a lawn and landscape business or like I said if you're just looking to buy your first truck or upgrade to a new truck if you guys are new to the channel don't forget to hit that big subscribe button if you guys want to learn a little bit more about trucks lawnmowers landscape and you know how to run a small business let's jump into it right here right now the couple topics that i got for you guys is interior exterior the backup cam things i love and then breakdowns those just seem to be the five categories so let's rip through this really quick the first question i had was the interior is there enough room in there for a full grown adult in the back and then also for a family if you have kids and so uh, short answer long yes there is so much room in that cab it's crazy you can fit full grown adults six foot tall adults 200 pounds in the back seats no problem in fact we do all the time when we go on a road trip especially as we go up north michigan and i take the rest of my family brothers sister-in-law my mom so on and so forth another question i had was leather versus the cloth seats uh leather leather seats for sure if you ever had a cloth vehicle you know that the seats just get nasty uh they get extremely hot Leather seats are the way to go, especially for maintenance and to keep it clean. Even on a work truck, I still think leather seats are way easier. One other question I got was the heated seat option. Whether it's Ford or a different brand, would I spend the extra money for 400 bucks to get the heated rear seats? Simple answer is no. Any modern day truck, arguably in the last four or five years, should have remote start. And although it is nice for those folks in the back, the reality is their passengers and how many times you're gonna have passengers in the back seat of your truck very rarely right all right the next category let's talk about exterior man you guys lit it up with the question so exterior we've got the go recon lights i hinted at those last time i'll get a little close up for you the go recons were an aftermarket that we got installed on the truck now we actually had no cab lights installed so we did have to have the dealer do a uh, installed job but a little swap out action there uh, at any good dealer or truck accessory shop and you're good to go the go recons they're maybe 150 to 200 bucks i like the white leds i think they just pop with those white leds in the front grill the next question i get is the snow plow prep package this does have the snow plow prep package and a quick little word of advice if you guys plan to plow snow with your truck make sure you do get the snow plow prep package if you need any kind of warranty work on the truck and you have a plow on it but you did not get the snow plow prep package say that five times fast uh, they're going to deny any warranty claims i've had a number of people text me and dm me and email me over the years buying trucks and then forgetting to get the snow plow prep package not a good idea the next question I get is the Line-X bed liner. That is what we went with with the backside of our truck. I think it is quite honestly the best bed liner that is in the market today. Again, we went with the Line-X Platinum and that is just something that I wanted to do to protect the investment of the truck and the bed. If you do not have a bed liner in your truck, we've all been there, we know how it looks, how it goes. It's gonna get scraped up, scratched, dinged and dented and quite honestly, four or $500 on a good bed liner is a smart investment for your work truck. Another good question here, crew cab and the four doors versus just like the regular cab or extended cab. You guys can see we've got the four full doors and I think that is the way to go. Whether you have a family or you guys got crews out there running uh, in and out of the truck, do a lawn care, landscaping, hardscaping, those four full doors are awesome. It beats having to pop the doors, have guys jump out when they gotta go to the gas station or go hit up the restroom. Four full doors is the way to go. Now, here's what I will say. The four full doors is what we went with with the short bed truck. Now, the four full doors with the long bed, that is a very long vehicle. And the reason we did not go for that is we're cutting grass. We're inside subdivisions and the length between driveway to driveway for us isn't really that long. And when you couple a 16, 18, or 20 foot long trailer, whether it's enclosed or utility, that's gonna really limit your options with parking that rig on the side curb in the side of the road when you guys are cutting grass. Now, I think a super crew with an X, uh, extra long bed, the eight foot bed is awesome, but that is a lot of truck. That is a very, very long truck. 
truck, that's gonna stick out of almost any parking space or at any parking lot. Now, also, if you're plowing snow, you guys can see we got the plow. Good luck trying to plow snow residentially with a super crew and the extra long bed. It's a great option, which kind of is another question. What about the dump insert? So this is the six and a half uh, foot dump insert. And a lot of people are always wondering if I would have went with the eight foot option. Simple answer is no, uh, because I wanted the super crew and then I also wanted the shorter bed. Now the eight foot definitely gonna get more capacity, but I think the eight foot uh, dump insert, uh, like the buyer's dump insert that we have would be more reserved for a regular truck, like a WT or an XL that you're adding to your crew into your fleet. Uh, the aux switches are great. Haven't had any issues with those. Light bars. Uh, we have the buyer's third brake light installed on our truck. That is a really popular question. There is an Akari light bar that you can get out there, but it's a couple bucks and it's a premium. But I will tell you, if you are installing a dump insert, don't go with the Akari light bar because the dump insert is going to be too close to the cab and you're not gonna be able to use that light bar uh, mount. So instead we use just a piece of metal that kind of hooks up and left. That is the buyer's third brake light. And then we can mount our brake light to it by just screwing and bolting into that. One other question we get all the time is, what about the rear backup camera for the truck since we took off the tailgate, since we have the dump insert? We used an extra camera that we bought from Camera Source, which is actually an affiliate partner of ours now, Brian's 10. So many of you guys wanted to uh, you know, pick up a rear backup camera and looking for a deal. So we inked a small deal with those guys to help you save some money. That's what all those Brian 10's codes for uh, affiliates are for. So what we did with the rear backup camera is we mounted it on the uh, undercarriage of the dump insert and those same cables, whether they're like the aux cables or the AV cables, whatever you talk about or whatever they're called, uh, they just literally connected to the old AV cable from the tailgate. So we can still retain use of that rear backup camera from the in-dash screen part of the truck and we didn't have to get an extra monitor or screw something onto the dash. Now let's wrap this up here with just talking a little bit about the things I love, some breakdowns, and then the last question, which was whether I'd buy it again, but if I would have bought new versus used. That seemed to be the biggest question and takeaway from that first video I was talking to you guys about that we did two weeks ago, besides gas versus diesel, right? So things I love, the storage. There is so much storage available in this truck, it's not even funny. Okay, there are side pockets on the doors. There's uh, the whole big cubby down the center of the truck in the middle. There's a pocket up front underneath the dash. The rear seats, there's storage underneath there. There is storage galore in this truck and I think that's awesome. Whether you are a contractor storing your tools or you guys got hats and gloves, whatever it is, or you're just a big family and you guys are trying to find pockets for, you know, diapers, baby food, you know, bottles, you know, uh, fast food if you guys are eating out on the on the go while you're taking a trip. There's so much storage in this truck, it's not even funny. And I think that is something that Ford did right. Another thing I really love about the truck is the fact that it has so many plugs and charging accessories and ports. I think there's like four or five cigarette lighters, two or three uh, different USB ports to charge. There are cigarette lighters and USB charging ports everywhere. If you have four or five adults with you, they they all have their own charging cable for their phone. They can charge your accessories. For us, we have headphones, earbuds, Bluetooth accessories, camera accessories for YouTube, all this kind of mess. It's always charging on the go. And frankly, like if, if you have it, you know what I'm talking about. And if you didn't have it, I don't know how you could live without it. All right, let's wrap this thing up here in a quick, timely fashion. Let's talk about breakdowns, warranties, and recall work. And then we'll also just wrap this up with a quick little rant about buying new versus buying used and truck prices today, okay? So one thing I wanna talk about was a couple of things that have broke over the years that I forgot uh, since you guys asked that all these questions on the first video kind of jogged my memory. The first one was the cooling unit on the, or the cooling fans uh, on the driver's seat. Uh, about a year in, maybe even six months in, uh, I noticed that the seat wasn't cooling and the motor underneath the seat was making this really loud buzzing slash purring noise. It was just going crazy. And I was wondering what that was anytime I turned on the cooled seats. Well, in which way that fan uh, was found to be defective. It wasn't working. They warranted out, no big deal, but you know, obviously they needed the truck for the day, which is kind of frustrating. Another thing that I've noticed is, and I don't know if this is related also to doing our fall cleanups, but the front uh, A pillar on the left side, the driver's side leaks water. That's something that I got an appointment for in about a week. So maybe I'll do a follow up video on. I'm not sure why, but it's literally dripping water from the handle. If you guys have any ideas what that could be, please leave, uh, leave them in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts because uh, we get a heavy rainstorm and it just comes right out of that handle and that's not good. And I'm wondering if maybe the sunroof, um, you know, drainage is plugged, something like that. Um, 
a little sketch when you're driving down the road and water's coming inside the vehicle, right? There was a couple other little small recalls. I don't really remember what they were. We got all that stuff taken care of during regular oil changes when I would just drop the truck off for a day. Uh, our service center has been pretty decent over here at Tom Holzer Ford. One other question I had was the death wobble. Haven't really experienced anything like that. Uh, let me know if you guys got Ford trucks and if you've experienced the death wobble. Thank God I haven't had anything like that, but I've seen videos on YouTube and thank God we dodged that bullet. The only other thing I would consider a breakdown still is the Ford Sing 3. I did a little rant on the last video. I'll save it on this one, but Ford Sing 3 sucks. <laughs> so the last question I'll wrap up with is buying a new truck versus buying a used truck. Now, I will leave a little uh, card here in the corner, a little playlist for Truck Talk Tuesday, which is about 15 to 20 videos that I did about two years ago when all this stuff was super fresh on my mind. And frankly, all that stuff is still really, really relevant. So if you're in the market to buy a new truck, consider checking out those videos and that playlist. The biggest question I got besides gas versus diesel was buying a new truck versus a used truck. And would I still buy a new truck? This truck was 58 grand and we got an A plan, which is employee pricing. Now Ford and many other car dealers here in Michigan and all throughout the country at different times will extend the A plan, the Z plan. Everybody's got a different plan and that discount pricing to friends, family, uh, aunts, uncles, cousins, nephews, all that kind of mess. Uh, so three years ago, we jumped on the A plan and we saved, I don't know, five, seven, 10% on the cost of the truck. Now, the last thing I'll tell you guys is that good luck trying to find any truck out there at a fair price that is used and has 50 to 100,000 miles on it. What I've noticed is that you're basically paying nearly the exact same price as you would for a brand new truck. My prediction is that within another three or four years because of the inflation, their printing money, uh, all the stimulus money, all this other mess, a standard work truck is probably gonna be 50,000 bucks in just another two or three years. And the Lariats, the King Ranches, the Limiteds, the Platinums, the Laramies, all that, your truck prices are probably gonna start uh, crossing that six figure mark in the next two or three years. And I just think it's ridiculous. Here's what we can do as business owners. We can complain all day, or maybe you're you know, a family guy, you can complain all day, or figure out how to make more money and charge more for the services we do. And that's really what I implore you guys to do. I do not see truck prices coming down ever. Like I said, this truck was 60 grand, and it's got a lot of the bells and whistles, but it's not even like the most top of the line truck at all. Like a limited uh, F-250 right now is like 90 some thousand bucks, which is crazy. So short story long, why would you spend 80 to 90 to 95 cents on the dollar buying the exact same truck that has 50 to 100,000 miles on it? Well, you might as well just buy a brand new one, write it off, section 179 it, and at least you know you got something that's reliable and something stable. Okay, now outside of that, if you wanna go buy a 10 year old or 20 year old truck that's got 100,000 miles on it and you're a mechanic or mechanically inclined, well, hey, have at it. But outside of everybody who you know would say, well, just fix it and repair it and all this other mess, yeah, yeah, yeah. The reality is that less than 10% of you guys watching work on your own vehicles day to day. Most of us still take it to a dealer. And frankly, they're pushing guys that are mechanics out any which way because you can't even fix these trucks without a laptop and some recent you know, college education about how to work on them, repair them, and maintain them. So long story short, I bought new because it was reliable, it was predictable, it was under warranty, and I didn't have to worry about a thing for three to five years, arguably. Buying a used truck, the exact same truck that was 50 grand, used, like I said, was 47,000, and it still had 80 to 100,000 miles on it. It's just absolutely ridiculous. So anyway, that's my rant. That's where I'm gonna leave it here. These are like 20, 25 more questions and topics that you guys had. Uh, all these were from the last video here uh, on YouTube, which I'll leave a little card here if you guys wanna check out. Uh, but hey, that's what I got. Leave some comments down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, big thumbs up. My hands are numb. It's cold out here. All right, guys, well, that's it. That's all I got. We'll catch up with you here on the next one.